Hi, my name is CJ and this is my RC channel. In this video, I am beginning the assembly of the Hawk. And as you probably know, this is a one meter discus launch glider. Uh, the big problem is putting a radio, uh, four servos in a very, very small space, uh, which is this area right here. Um, even with the hatch on it, not very tall. Uh, so even stacking, you know, one servo on top of another is um, potentially problematic. Um, I think I have figured out what I'm going to do, how I'm going to lay this out. I uh, talked in my intro video about uh, trimming the wires and soldering them uh, onto a receiver board. I do have a receiver that uh, has a bare board. Uh, without the um, the connectors and that would save space no doubt um, this is an orange uh, receiver specifically the r720x v2 it's a uh, a six channel and uh, so with the plastic removed um, this receiver will slide all the way back into the fuselage like that and it's probably from this edge here is at least a quarter inch back um, now uh, these are the uh, the bluebird servos the uh, BMS-101 AMGs um, I believe these are recommended on uh, the Hyperflight website. Uh, they were also uh, mentioned to me by a, uh, one of the viewers. And I was considering using these, uh, these Turnigy servos, but when I compared the measurements on them, uh, the Turnigy servo, even though it is one of their smallest, is... Uh, considerably larger. And let me just try to hold this for the camera real well so you can really see the difference in height and width. Okay, so I'm lining up the uh, cor bottom corner where the wires come out. And as you can see, it's several, at least a millimeter uh, to two millimeters wider and at least three or four millimeters taller. Uh, that's a big difference. And when you're considering this amount of space, I'm not really sure that this kit could be made to function with these servos. If it did, it would be incredibly tight. And I, I can't see how you wouldn't have issues with things rubbing and um, it, it's just, they're just a little too big. So those are gonna be set aside for some future project. Now, this is a little uh, uh, piece of fiberglass that they provide with the kit. And it's kind of a, like a mounting deck for your hardware servos specifically. And I just marked this off with the widths of four servos. So as you can see, I can easily put four servos in line, not having to stack them one on top of each other. Um, I've got room for the receiver and its wires and plugs. Um, I might have to bundle these up a bit uh, or I might um, you know, p pull some of them out and uh, repin them, shorten them, but that's that's doable. Um, that also involves cutting off the uh, the mounting tabs, uh, which violates the warranty right away. So the first thing that I'm going to do now that I've pulled these out of their package is to get out a servo tester and test them. And uh, if they don't work. I got to send them back if they're if one of them has a problem it's jittery whatever um, but that's what you need to find out before you void your warranty <laughs> uh, because anything I'm talking about here as far as changing the length of these wires or cutting off these tabs immediately voids the warranty and you know that's that's all fair and good um, so if I do it like this that leaves me room for most of a battery up front um, I've got two batteries here uh, that I purchased. Uh, one is a 200 milliamp Turnigy, and the other is a 300 milliamp 
uh, Turnigy Nanotech. They're both uh, single cell 3.7 volt LiPos. Um, so I have the option to use either. Uh, the, um, the 300 is shorter in length, but it's a little wider and a little taller. I mean, we're not talking large differences here. Um, and conceivably, I could move the servos to a distance where this would fit and uh, have everything in a nice neat row, but it would be close. And what might be a better option is to give myself a little more room for the, uh, the wires at the back here, have the servos all in a row, and then uh, the servos are going to be facing uh, opposite directions. So one will be facing left, the next one right, left, right. Okay. Um, and so they'll be a little askew from each other, like maybe this much, maybe not that much. Okay. But let's just say they're in line like this. Okay. I could then place this battery right on top of the servos with a little bit of Velcro and not have any uh, interference issues or clearance issues uh, that would allow me to move this battery reasonably far forward and it would leave this much of the nose open for adding any ballast that's necessary to uh, to get this centered out to um, balance it on its center of gravity so um, that seems like the way to go, I think. Uh, I can't think of a better way. I think it's going to be a nice, clean install. Um, I will probably... Uh, let me pause up for a minute. Sorry about that. I needed a couple of minutes uh, to take care of some stuff. And um, so anyway, we are given these push rods here for our ailerons and we're given a little bit of push rod housing just a little little tube like a little bit of Bowden tubing but this is uh, stiff tubing not uh, flexible tubing like uh, Bowden tubing uh, in the sense of what I've been using on some of my other kits um, but uh, this would be great to uh, cut in half and then place inside the fuselage so the wire will come out it'll be a bit of a guide help keep it stable keep it from uh, warping uh, you know from flexing you you know if you've got uh, if you've just got this going from a horn up here to a, a horn on the wing back out here um, you have this has the ability to flex like this and that's gonna rob you of control um, so having this uh, this bit of push rod housing here to keep these stable is uh, very nice. I'm going to set this aside. Um, and I don't think I'm going to be using those. I think I'm going to be using uh, these little 2.0s. I got two of them. They were cheap. They're like $3.50, $4, something like that. Um, I definitely recommend these. And uh, so what I'm probably going to do is make the aileron servos the two forward most servos and make the two rearmost servos rudder and elevator um, just to uh, limit that the distance of the pull cords and not have the pull cords um, you know passing like if I have the uh, the ailerons uh, here um, the aileron control arms could catch on the pull cords for the rudder or elevator so by running these along the side of the fuselage and uh, making the Ford servos the, uh, the actuators for the ailerons, um, that kind of uh, eliminates the possibility of anything snagging on the, the rudder and elevators. And uh, that's, that's very important. Um, uh, set, setting this stuff up, making adjustments is going to be one of the hard parts. Um, because it's really not going to be possible to do traditional uh, adjustments to things. For example, I'm not going to be able to put, uh, you know, threaded 
uh, clevises on these. I'm basically going to do like a Z bend and uh, then at this end just an L bend and maybe have a little O ring um, or it might just be that the with the uh, with the L bend the distance from the fuselage keeps it from uh, coming out of the control horn something like that um, I'll show you what I work out but when you do it that way when you're kind of uh, you know making the bends in these things you're kind of stuck with what you get so it's gonna have to be done very carefully so that um, you uh, you know the servo doesn't end up uh, having to be compensated because the servo would have to compensate for any inaccuracy in other words if to get this zeroed out flat you don't want the servo to be at a 45 degree angle because that's robbing you of control throw and um, another reason that I decided that I'm probably going to go with this particular receiver is because this is the exact same receiver that I used in my last DLG, uh, which is the Raven 1500. It's a uh, nice um, wood uh, built up wing and fiberglass uh, and carbon uh, fuselaged uh, plane from Hobby King. And uh, I did a nice job on that build and I had set up uh, the ailerons with a lot of extra controls. I've actually got five flight modes. I've got launch mode, cruise mode, um, I've got reflex, uh, and I've got uh, several layers of, of uh, flap as well. And uh, so what I'd like to do, and I'm going to do, is I'm basically just going to clone the radio setup so all I'll need to do is make fine point adjustments to that setup. I won't have to go in and reprogram a whole new four channel glider from scratch where I'm doing all those different uh, wing, set, wing adjustments and such. Um, for those of you who don't know, reflex is when your flaps go a little bit up and that kind of it, it reduces the amount of lift, but increases the speed with which the wing can go through the air. Um, so it's a uh, that that's one of the flight modes is speed mode, uh, where you get some reflex going. Um, in launch mode, I have a small amount of reflex plugged in, a small amount of up elevator, uh, things like that to uh, enhance the. Uh, the plane's base setup for strictly for the launch mode and then as soon as it's up you flip a switch and put it into thermal mode um, thermal mode has a little bit of down flap just a hair um, which increases the lift of the overall airfoil um, cruise mode is a level uh, both airfoils level and then landing mode is a certain amount of flap um, and then that flap can be adjusted with the throttle stick to go in in the case of the uh, of the Raven I've got it set up that it can go almost uh, 90 degrees it goes to about 80 85 degrees flap uh, by adjusting the throttle um, so you can take it from a small amount to a, a dramatic amount of flap and almost bring the plane to a stop in the air um, so it's a very nice setup I spent a lot of time programming all that and I don't see any reason to have to go back to square one and do it all over again and because I'm using uh, five channels to make all that work I can't use my smallest receiver I've got a teeny little receiver that's a, only a four channel um, I could do a half decent setup there, but I wouldn't have all that flap control. I could put in some of those flight modes, but I wouldn't have that separate throttle um, to make those flaps really, you know, barn door down uh, because that requires that fifth channel. Um, in, in my setup, I'm running, and this is something that you can program yourself. You can emulate this, basically just giving you the 
the broad strokes of it, <clears throat> and you'll have to figure it out for your personal type of radio, but any programmable radio should be able to do this. Um, you know, elevators on elevator, rudders on rudder, uh, one of the ailerons is on aileron, and the other aileron is on the first auxiliary channel. And then I use the throttle channel as a mixer to bring both the aileron to, you know, it's, it's, it adds, it's like a multiplier onto both the aileron um, and the uh, auxiliary channel to uh, override the basic setting and, and really drop those flaps down uh, instead of getting that normal left and right that you get. Now you still get that in any mode, so you can still use ailerons even when the flaps are, are deployed down. That's the idea of having that mix. Um, is that I could put 25% flap and still have ailerons at any time I want because it, the, the feathering is controlled by two channels whereas the, the amount of, of that they're both down is a, a mix of a third channel. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, so it's a little complicated. It took a little time to figure out and uh, and work it through. And and um, I'm definitely once I clone it over, I'm going to have to set it up for this particular plane. I may have to reverse a few servos and then change some uh, parameters and such. But it's the the basic setup should uh, work for this just fine. And it is a dynamite uh, discus launch glider uh, configuration. So. Um, so let me just go over that for those of you who aren't uh, DLG familiar and have never done this kind of advanced programming. Um, you've got your rudder, you got your elevator. You have two, three more channels that you're going to use, um, but still only four servos. The third channel is mixed in to the other two. Um, so you have aileron and then auxiliary one. Okay, your flight modes are launch where you have a little bit of reflex and there's a little bit of up elevator and you you kind of got to test that mix um, over a series of, of throws to figure out how much up elevator you need you know you kind of dial it um, but once you have that set up you can just you know chuck it into the air and you can get more height because you're you're not competing your throw isn't competing against drag of the wings lift um, because you're eliminating some of that lift with the reflex by raising the rear of the flaps a little bit okay so that changes the shape of the airfoil and you don't need lift at that point because you're you're rising on the force of your throw um, and the angle with which you threw it into the air. So any excessive lift is just slowing, slowing the, the plane down. It's, it's, um, it's competing against the force of your throw for how high that glider is going to get. Okay. And that's also why you have that little bit of up elevator to keep that nose up, to keep the plane in, into a steep, uh, rise with your throw. Okay. Uh, your next mode is going to be a cruise mode and that's just everything at base settings you know these are level your uh, stabilizers level uh, speed mode is for if you're like trying to get upwind you know you've gotten blown down wind to get a bit and you're trying to fight your way back through the wind um, or you want to get back up or downfield quickly um, it's a little bit of reflex again raising the flaps a little bit killing some lift but making the wind the wing penetrate faster through the air okay um then okay so that's so let, let's see crew i did lit launch cruise speed um well there's land let's see launch cruise speed landing what am i forgetting um hang on Let's let Lady Spectrum tell you. Cruise mode. Thermal mode. Thermal mode, thank you. Speed 
mode. Speed mode. Thermal mode. Cruise mode. Landing mode. Okay, so those are the... I've got it basically five settings set up on uh, two switches. You need... Um, to get five different modes, you need two three-position switches because one of them is going to be neutral. Um, so, thermal mode is a small amount of flaps. Not so much that it degrades your speed dramatically, but enough so that if you're, you know, orbiting in a thermal, you've got that little bit of extra lift to help you, you know, rise up and, and take advantage of the thermal. And how much down angle you give is a variable. That's something that you set up that you, you know, um, test and develop what's a, the right angle for that. Um, now, because you have at almost any time the ability to raise the throttle stick and bring in flap, you can tune that in the air um, remotely by just adding a little bit of throttle stick and enhance the amount of uh, flap that you're giving in, in thermal mode. Um, you could do that in any mode. And uh, so landing mode is a heavier flap and um, possibly a little bit of down elevator if you think you need it uh, to compensate for the the rise because when you add flaps you generally get a, a little bit of a ballooning effect and so having a little bit of down elevator to tilt the nose you know so that your landing mode is a, is by default um, a slight downward angle with a you know whatever amount of flap you want initially and then you can pour in the flap with the throttle stick as you as you want um, so I think that that pretty much outlines the five flight modes and, and what they do and to help you tune for that um, this is what I did I made myself some little uh, little wing tools that I can basically stick onto the wing and I can optically see how much if the if this tape wasn't here I could slide this in up to the front edge of the flap there and I can see how much uh, flap angle I'm getting and um, it's uh, in five degree increments the reds are five the blacks are are ten degrees and uh, these are just something I made from uh, uh, one thirty-second inch plywood. You could make them out of Lexan um, or cardboard, or um, there's a variety of things that you could uh, could make these out of. But um, I, I did the plywood, and these have worked well for quite a while. Uh, so this is a nice little tool to make for yourself. It helps you uh, set up flaps and reflex and whatnot <clears throat> for your gliders oh uh, let's see um, something else I'm thinking about doing um, I like to have a lot of up elevator if I want it um, so and I usually set up um, uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. I'm sorry, it's been a long day. I'm a little brain dead. Um, I like to have a lot of up elevator if I want it. It's one of those get out of trouble free card kind of things. Um, and uh, the one thing I don't like about DLG designs in general is that there's usually this kind of setup where um, you're pulling up with a string for up which is good because that means you're not relying on a spring like you are with down elevator to get you that crucial change um, you're pulling on it it's a mechanical connection as opposed to as I said relying on the spring But the thing I don't like is that you're usually limited, you know, by its impact against the fuselage, okay? 
and that's not a bad angle I I'm guessing 20 degrees um, maybe 16 to 18 degrees um, it's not a lot certainly it's not heavy duty and um, so I'm thinking about just making a little spacer um, basically like a, a washer the shape of this out of a, uh, a little bit of plywood or something like that um, let me just uh, grab a piece of scrap balsa here and kind of get an example going okay this is one and a half maybe two millimeter balsa so let's just um, excuse me let's kind of just take a look here and okay here is our first angle if we are got this screwed in place and if we add that little bit of spacer that's our new angle sorry this is hard to do while trying to dance around the camera So there's the new maximum up elevator, and that's a decent amount more. That's at least four degrees more, if not five degrees more. And I'd feel more comfortable having that as my maximum up. Um, so I might even just use a thin sheet of balsa, and uh, it'll compress a little bit, but that's fine. Um, once it is shaped... Uh, I can always just uh, drip a little bit of thin CA on it because, it, you know, it would be considerably smaller than this. It would not literally be this, this little airfoil shape here with two holes in it. And uh, then I could just set it on some clear plastic to dry and drip some thin CA on it to, you know, solidify it um, so it won't crush any further. And uh, that would give me a little bit of a space or I wouldn't even have to glue it in place. I could just stick it uh, over this when I screw this uh, together um, I'm probably not going to be taking the rudder on and off a lot uh, I'm, back of my car has a lot of space um, and if I take the wife's car I've got a, a little minivan SUV thing um, that I uh, have even more space to work with so um, uh, it wouldn't be a problem uh, to not be taking a glider this small apart because it is itty bitty um, but uh, that's just something I'm thinking about whether you guys decide to uh, do that kind of thing is up to you um, so uh, let's just do a quick test here and see how these bluebirds are super quiet wow these are nice they are definitely worth the money I don't know if you can even hear this you can see the gears moving inside and it is super quiet and it's very smooth and it's very granular you can move just a little bit small amounts of input makes very small changes this should be uh, a great set of servos especially for a plane like this that is, is going to benefit from precision so i have centered it and unplugged it that one tested out just fine just going to roll through these real quick go at first it wasn't working and it's like wait a second oh I've left it in centered mode usually when I do a test like this I roll it back and forth a few times I'll roll it to one extreme like all the way left and then I hit centered so that it snaps all the way back to center and, and stops just to make sure I'm at dead on center
another super smooth servo centered Works great, centered. Okay, servos are good to go. So I'm gonna stop the video here. I'm gonna start doing some work. I'm gonna cut off these tabs. Um, you can go about it however you wish. Uh, you could try using a set of cutters. You could, I don't know, hack at it with an X-Acto for a while. Um, I am gonna use a micro saw and slowly uh, saw these off. I'm gonna go at them vertically like this, not from the side. Um, so hold the flat of the blade up against the edge here and make a nice clean cut. Um, I, I wanna, uh, this looks like a very hard plastic. Clear plastics can be the type of plastic that can shatter. Um, so I wouldn't try, you know, snapping them off with a pair of uh, pliers or using a pair of nippers on them because you could take part of the case with it. Um, I, I just wouldn't do that. I'd take your time, do it right. Um, always the best philosophy. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to start uh, thinking about the, the final placement. I've already discussed uh, what I'm most likely going to be doing. Uh, two ailerons at the front, one facing this way, one facing the other way, rudder elevator behind them one left, one right. Um, so I'm gonna start uh, doing that. I'm gonna choose my horns, bag up the rest of it, set it aside, um, things like that. Bind up my receiver. And uh, so I will show you all the good stuff and uh, try to spare you boring, repetitive stuff like watching me test four servos in a row. <laughs> so, um, uh, next video, uh, like I said, will probably have me uh, uh, mounting servos onto this strap here. Um, I've got a few different options on how to do that. I might use... Um, I have this... Uh, it's a gold nitrile tape. and it comes in different widths. This looks like it would probably lend itself to that. Yeah, so once those uh, tabs are off, I might uh, put a couple of wraps of this around them just to uh, seal off the, um, the seams in the servo. Uh, and um, I'm probably not gonna use glue, but um, I, it just seems like a good thing to kind of protect them um, and then if I do need to use, if I do need to use, uh, some type of glue to attach them to this, uh, to this, uh, piece of fiberglass here, um, I'll be gluing the tape, not the servo itself. So if I want to, if I need to replace a servo, if, or if I've crashed this thing out and I want to, uh, scavenge the servos, I can just run an X-Acto blade down the tape and uh, peel the tape away and pull the servos right off the board um, and have them come out undamaged unless they were damaged on impact. So something to think about. Um, you can order this stuff on, uh, on Amazon as so many things are available there. It seems I seem to plug Amazon all the damn time, but it, it's, it's a place that I can find so many of the things that I need to do what I do at a very reasonable cost. Um, so, you know, whatever politics are involved, um, I, I just don't think about that. I focus on price and need and availability and uh, time to deliver and things like that. Um, Got to be a little more practical. Can't be a vigilante or whatever. So, um, that's probably what I'm going to be doing with that. So, uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned some things. I hope that I put some thoughts in your head about uh, setting up different flight modes for this glider because this is a glider that really benefits from that type of programming. Um, you know, we, we have these nice radios that have so much functionality and so few people really uh, dive in and, and learn to program their radio. I highly recommend that uh, you make that uh, something that you 
go after is um, you know learning to exploit what your radio is capable of. Um, as I was saying, uh, I was talking about the um, the amount of throw. Uh, one of the things I do, I like having a lot of of throw available to me, but I generally um, a use small inputs when I fly and. Um, I also tend to uh, program in a, a nice exponential curve uh, into the servo input um, and uh, you know set up that curve so that you know the first quarter of the stick is is giving minimal you know activity and then as you you know move further and further toward the uh, outside edge of that of that stick throw you start ramping up dramatically the amount of uh, of angle that you get to the control surface and um, that's a very handy thing to use and um, you know most radios have exponential it's definitely something that uh, that you should use and for small high-performance gliders um, exponential it's exactly what it's made for so anyway um, the uh, <laughs> I tried to bail out of this twice now so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like, please subscribe. Um, I say that all the time, uh, please do. I'm gonna start reminding you guys at the beginning of the videos. Um, it, uh, it really helps. If it, it is gonna get to a point here by the end of this year where if, uh, if I don't have enough subscribers and enough views to monetize this website, I'm gonna to have to dramatically cut down on on the volume of, of kits that I'm doing. I'm just not gonna be able to afford it out of pocket. I'm pretty much, uh, <laughs> I haven't made my wife happy and I'm, I'm definitely uh, don't wanna go into debt beyond my wildest dreams. So help me out. It's not a lot to ask for you to click and uh, click that bell icon. That way you'll get a notification. If you're, if you're trying to follow one of my builds, you know, that, that little bell really helps you because you'll log into YouTube and bing, you get a little notice. You can go up, you can click on it. it takes you right to the video. You can see what I'm doing. Um, so thanks for watching. I appreciate all of you who have subscribed. Sorry to make you have to listen to this again. Enjoy.